Okay. What's going on everybody? It's Spark here and welcome to today's little video and this is kind of a breakdown of the F122 features trailer that only came out about a couple of hours ago. Now I wasn't initially planning on doing a video about this because I kind of felt like what um, kind of my opinion was and didn't really know what to really expect but now that it's come out and I've seen some things that have really gotten me kind of excited for when the game launches I thought I'd um, you know find a way to milk some views. So if you guys are new around here, then obviously make sure you're subscribed. I'm trying to get to 100 just before the new game comes out. So any support I can get would be absolutely brilliant. Of course, your support means at the absolute world to me. So thank you guys so much for just checking out this video. Obviously hit that like button, hit subscribe and a comment. And yeah, let's, let's talk about the game. The first thing I want to talk about when looking on the trailer, about 43 seconds into the video, if you scroll, if you zoom in at just the right moment, you will see that one driver is back in Formula 1 as a potential mighty icon and that driver is Yes, if you want to see Hulkenberg finally get a podium in F1, now is the chance to sign him up to your team. I honestly, I'm very happy that of all of the icons, I mean, Hulkenberg, kind of a cult favourite, very much comes back into it. I've also heard rumours as well that adding two more um, icons in addition to those that we got last year. So that means Mark Webber um, potentially on there. And also, I heard a rumour, I think from Arava's video, that Jacques Villeneuve will be one of the... Uh, my my um, my team icons, which is a bit of a weird choice because um, Villeneuve is a very controversial character within Formula One. I mean, some of the stuff that he says um, kind of come across the wrong way. I mean, me personally, I would have loved to have seen Mika Hakkinen come into it. I think Hakkinen was the driver that got me into Formula One. Blindingly fast, had some great fights on Michael Schumacher. But anywho, I'm not going to complain about what we're getting. Uh, we're getting the expansion of uh, Mighty Micons, and Hulkenberg is back. I am so, so happy about that. But also, in terms of the My Team icons as well, with this. Um with the features in terms of budget, and this will mean something for later on in one of my videos for F122. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do in terms of keeping David Cawthorn into my my team, but I'll get onto that maybe in my um, in my uh, season finale for F1 2021, which should be coming out later on this week. So get your notification bell icon out and make sure you don't miss it. So the second feature that they've given us more of a glimpse into is F1 Life. So looking at this, it looks like very you can customize your your pad to be a lot more swanky. You can put supercars on display. You can Customize like your furniture, your posters on your wall, stuff like assets that you have on your essentially your play hub. So what I've seen as well, it kind of looks like you what that's what your main menu is going to be, which I guess is a nice way to start personalizing the game more towards yourself. But in all honesty, I kind of feels like um, it's very expensive frosting on an otherwise you know samey samey kind of cake. If you see what I'm trying to say, and that kind of brings me on to the um, inclusion of supercars. I'm still wondering what um, on earth I'm going to get out of it. I mean, it may make for a nice kind of hot lap tutorial video for some people to make. Uh, in a game where we're driving Formula 1 cars, which is obviously the pinnacle of motorsport, what kind of value is having supercars under it? It seems a little bit tacked on to me, but I'm not, obviously it won't knock it until I try it. it. But it does seem a little bit tacked on, a little something that... They kind of threw in as almost like a bonus to show off a little bit more. What more, 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 more could we potentially do here? But if you wanted to live out the fantasy of seeing which of the Mercedes or the Aston Martin safety car is faster than the other, then I suppose that has some merit to it. But apart from that, I don't really see um, the value of supercars. Apart, as long as, they, as long as they feel nice to drive, that's the only thing I'm going to consider. The only other thing to consider with that is that EA are the people that actually make Need for Speed, and Need for Speed is one of the biggest sort of car franchise games out there at the moment. So it makes sense, obviously. Probably from a cross marketing perspective to get you almost thinking about Need for Speed and just thinking, oh god, that new game's out there. I potentially may want to buy it. But then again, that kind of depends on your feeling of Need for Speed, which is that kind of series I felt like kind of has gone down in recent ones. Underground 2 for me was the peak, so you can't really top that. But in any case, um, Let's just see what that one brings. I'm not going to knock it until I try. So the My Team practices as well. The dashboards have been revitalized as well with the ideal racing line as well that you probably best to take in order to hit the practice um, hit the hit the practice goals a bit more efficiently. Not quite sure how I feel about that, but given how well, like when you guys saw in my most recent Jeddah video, literally going through the rest of those um, gates and trying to do the acclimatization program, pretty much gave me Vietnam flashbacks as the flash as the event it was already happening, if that 
sort of makes sense, but probably doesn't, but you know what I mean. Now, once you come round to um, the more the end of the video, when you actually, when you pause on the screen when they're selecting the tracks, if you look to the right, two things I've noticed about the tracks available, Portimao and China are available. To be fair, I have to give Owen the credit for that one because he's the one that messaged me about it on the Discord. So, Owen, if you're watching, GG's. But that's a quite interesting one, especially with the topic around DLC tracks. And I know when Portimao went off the calendar for F122, I think a lot of people definitely missed it. And China, I think China's very much a take that if if you, I know one thing I've been finding is since I've been driving on F1 2021 that I haven't really driven it that much. So because I don't really feel like it's kind of, it's never really gripped me. It's a track I've always wanted to drive. But having it in there does give you a lot more options in terms of well, what you can do potentially, potentially for my team or potentially for league racing as well. So all things considered, like it's nice to have them in there. And as far as DLC tracks goes, um, I know I think there's quite a few um, videos that have already been made about it. But the more the one side that I did when you see it, I did the Germany tracks. So we need to have them back on form on Formula One for sure. I wouldn't mind seeing Magello again because I, did, I thought that was a decent uh, track while it was brought onto the track in 2020. A controversial choice that I wouldn't mind seeing as well is actually Indianapolis because I know obviously we're going to bring up 2005 and how that race was all complete bollocks and all that. Well, to be fair, it was bollocks, but. It's a track, it's Indianapolis, for crying out loud. And I thought the F1 track wasn't too bad. Looking at the more immersive features within the game, obviously we've got immersive safety, immersive broadcast safety car, immersive broadcast formation laps, and pit stops as well. It seems like there's a little bit more than what we're seeing now of what I've seen recently, as opposed to just turning the wheel and that kind of decides how fast or slow your pit stop's going to be. Now we've actually got... Um, the possibility for pit stop errors within the game. So it does make me wonder how much influence Ferrari has had on the game. Yeah, looking at you guys at Monaco. But that is kind of, that's going to make it a lot more immersive and entertaining too. Probably to record and to actually play. Except for when it happens to me. Which in this place I'll be raging at the screen. But also I noticed once you come round to one of the upgradable features on my team. When you scroll down to the bottom of the screen. One of those features is to actually upgrade your pit crew. So you're not just. Um, so you're not just raising your uh, focus or your pace or your experience of your second driver. You've also you've also got the ability to upgrade your pit crew. Obviously, F2 is returning with um, F1 F2 22 coming later down the line, which means if you want to have the fantasy of taking Alessio de Leda to the front of the F1 grid, you can get to do that as well. Overall, how do I rank the trailer? I mean, they're not just going to. It's about. Um, it's over. It's just under a month until it comes out for early day access for those who pre-ordered the game. So I'm expecting a lot more trailers coming up recently. I'm probably going into a little bit more about what they're going to do for my team, etc., etc. But overall, it feels like they put so much more effort into F1 Life and making it that kind of more personal. You can tell the way the trailers cut there that says definitely that EA influence is very high tempo, very energetic, rem very reminiscent of what they did for FIFA. It's um, it's really my team. I think the thing is really going to change for me because um, as you'll see, I'm near the end of my my team playthrough for F1 2021. It's the last round coming up near the end of the week in Abu Dhabi, which means that things may very well change um, for my team. So I'm reckoning if I get third in the constructors and the drivers, I'm probably going to go with a low budget option, which means that if they do keep the my team icons, I'm going to have to lose DC from my team, and that way I'll I'll probably sign one of the F2. Um, drivers, um, hopefully someone like Felipe Drogovic or Oscar Piastri, and maybe even re-signing Dan Tictum again, giving him another chance in my team. So yeah, there's uh, plenty to talk about, but it's definitely something I'm excited about because the core gameplay um, will change, obviously based on how or based on the drivers. But I'm really looking forward to when that game comes out. What are the features that hopefully have missed? So guys, if you saw anything new in the feature today that I may have missed or something that um, something that intrigued you or something you want to know more of, do let me know in the comments below. And if you're new around here, then do get subscribed. As I said at the beginning of this video, I'm looking to hit at least 100 before the new um, before the new game comes out. Something I would love to um, obviously get to. And like I said, your support means the whole world to me. So thank you for everybody else who's um, subscribed based on the back of my last video. And with that, guys, um, do let me know what else you want to see in F122 and things you're excited about. And things that maybe you want to see um, in terms of what videos I make for F122. But um, obviously, with that, guys, I'll leave you with that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Spark. See you guys very soon.
Bye-bye.